Do you want your supports to come off like this? What's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel. You guys have been asking me what's my support settings for I don't know how long. So I'm gonna do what you guys have been asking for and I'm gonna give them to you. Not only that, but in this video, I'm gonna go over all the settings for support. That way, if you have any troubles, you can troubleshoot it yourself. So by the end of this video, you'll have a greater understanding on how your support settings actually work. So stay tuned, you do not wanna miss what's coming up next. Thanks to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. With the weather getting warmer and convention season just around the corner, I'm starting to get a little FOMO. I just wanna be there with all my friends and take some pictures. Social media is filled with convention photos, outdoor activities, and just people living their best life. This can heighten feelings of inadequacy or fear of missing out. I deal with this all the time. Anxiety often peaks in late springtime and my sponsor BetterHelp can connect you with a therapist who can provide some support. The majority of BetterHelp members seek support for anxiety and 69% of members report improved anxiety symptoms after six weeks of therapy on BetterHelp. It's easy to start. Just fill out a questionnaire and you'll be matched with the therapist in as little as a couple of days. Easily switch therapists at any time at no extra cost if it's not the right fit. They carefully make sure therapists on the platform are well qualified and their customer support team is there to help you if you have any questions. With over 7,000 reviews and a 4.3 rating on Trustpilot, BetterHelp is a platform you can trust. Let BetterHelp help you rule your anxiety so it doesn't rule you. Click the link in the description or go to betterhelp.com backslash just G to get 10% off your first month of therapy. Ho, 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 CGI G here, what's going on? So before we just go ahead and jump right into the support settings, I thought we'll just go over some of the other settings that are on this application. Now, I like to use these Orca style slicers. We're talking about Bamboo Studio, Orca Slicer. Elegoo has switched over their slicer program to this style as well as Flash Forge. I like these the most. If you are not using this style slicer, and you want to, I'll leave some links down below in the description. So let me get on out of here so I can explain some more. Okay guys, so this is the newest version of Bamboo Studio. What we're gonna do first is open up a new project right here, and then it's gonna bring you to their default page. If we look over here, we're gonna talk about our printer. Now you can upload multiple printers, now I wanna say if you're using another printer other than a Bamboo Labs printer, you're gonna to wanna to head and use Orca Slicer. If you are using a Bamboo Labs printer, we're gonna go over here to Printer and we're going to add your printer. Then you have some other things like your dimensions, your nozzle flow rate, you can change these in your settings. Down here at the bottom, you have your quality. That means your layer height. Okay, this is where you change your inner and outer layer heights, your Z seam position, as well as if you want to ironing. Go over to strength. This is gonna show how many walls you want on there and your infill and exfill patterns. Skipping over to speed. Everybody should know about their speed settings, how fast your printer goes, how fast you can set your your travel speed, stuff like that. And if we move over to our next tab, we're gonna get to our support tabs. So this is what you guys came for, right? But not just yet, hold on. Let's go over some of these support settings so you can get a better understanding. I can show you my support settings right away, say, hey, copy this, but it might not go for your printers because all printers are different. So I wanna give you the tools so you can understand just in case you need to make some modifications to my settings. First thing you wanna do is enable supports. Then next is your type. You have your tree auto, your normal supports, which is your grid supports. Then you can do them manually and you can do them manually for tree. We're gonna go with tree auto cause to me those are the best. But some circumstances are gonna call for you to use your grid supports. Like if you have a direct flat overhang that you need to support, you wanna use grids for those. And then you can just break them right off. Next is gonna be your default. You can get your tree slim, strong, hybrid, or organic. We're just gonna go default for now. 
your threshold angle. I'm going to leave it default for now, but there are some circumstances that you're going to need to lower or higher them so you can get less supports in a particular region or more supports just in case, just in case they're not supporting them enough. Now you can get your supports to only support from the build plate just in case you don't want to mess up your print by having the, the supports print over them. You can do your support critical regions only. That means if you wanna save some time and you know you don't have a complicated structure, you just wanna support things that are gonna fail no matter what. Next, you got raft layers. We're gonna leave that at zero. We're gonna support the base of the raft. We're gonna leave that at default. Initial layer density, this is gonna be at the very base of your print. This is gonna be your make or break for your failures and your supports. I leave it default. Most of this stuff, to be honest, on my supports are going to be default. So let's just jump over right into those meat and potatoes, what you came here to watch. So here are my support settings. I'm gonna scroll down slowly. You can pause at any time so you can copy them. Let's go ahead and throw on a print so I can explain these supports and what they're used for. So on here, I got my spider punk helmet and I would definitely not print it in this orientation. So we're gonna go ahead and rotate it to how I will actually print it. Now that I have it placed how I would do that, now I'll go ahead and slice that up. I already have my supports enabled. So I don't wanna make this too much of a, how I print my helmet tutorial versus the support tutorials. But normally, if I have a helmet that comes to a dome like so, I would actually delete these and add some support blockers because I don't need to print supports in the middle. But just for support's sake, we're just gonna leave that in there right now. So I just recently printed this Spider-Man mask from Marvel Rivals. It's a Yosh Studio file. If you do want it, I'll leave it down in the description. But as you can see, I still have the supports on them. One of the things I want to show you is what the supports do in the settings and then show you how it helps you on this mask. One of the things that's most important is this right here, threshold angle. So if you see right here that it stopped generating supports around here, if I were to add a higher threshold angle to that, it's going to generate more supports as we go up. The lower, the least amount. Let's double it and see what it says. Now that you see that I doubled it, it added a lot more supports and it added a lot more supports. So that's why I usually keep it at 30. Sometimes you gotta add more just by a little bit and sometimes you gotta take away. Here's a setting that a lot of people don't know about and it's gonna help your supports break away extra smooth. You're going to change the top Z distance. This is like the meat and potatoes of all support settings. I actually have mine at 0.2 and they work for me. But if you go up, the more you go up, the bigger the distance from your support to the actual print there is. So if you wanna look right here where the support meets the actual physical print, that's gonna be your Z top distance. That's how you're gonna get those supports to break away extra smooth. The rest of these settings, I leave default. That's it. There's nothing else to it because as long as you set your printer parameters correctly, the supports are going to be set correctly as well. What's going on guys? This is CGIG again, and I'm going to come talk to you about a few things. I already explained which settings will help you remove your supports easier, but there are some factors that is not in your settings that will also help your supports remove faster. One of those things are filaments and filament types. Now, when I make all my helmets, I've been using a lot of Polymaker Cost PLA. Why? One of the reasons why I use that PLA is because it's just easier to sand your prints down. The second is because it's a light PLA. Now, when I first started off 3D printing, I used to use PLA Plus because it was just stronger and more durable. But what I didn't know is that strength and durability was making it so much harder to remove those supports. You have to think about some of those things when you choose your PLA. Polymaker makes poly light PLA and that helps it easier to break apart. 
So when you use tough PLAs like PLA Plus, it's gonna be harder to remove those supports. If you are using a Bamboo Labs and you have an AMS system or any other printer with a separate system to feed filament, you might wanna start thinking about using some support filament. Now there's multiple settings in there. You can use this filament to build your supports and have them separated from your actual print. This filament is made to remove easily, not like PLA is. Or if, because this is not cheap, what you can do is print your supports normally and then have a thin layer of support break on top of your actual supports. So it's gonna be like a support sandwich. You're gonna have your regular PLA that you're printing your helmet with, a thin layer of support filament, and on top of that, you're gonna have your actual print. That will help greatly in removing your supports. I hope this helps. See you guys later. So that pretty much sums up the support settings. I hope you guys learned something. And if you did, think about smashing that like button. Subscribe and turn on that bell notifications so you can get my next upload. But I also want you guys to remember as well, it might not just be your settings. It might be the type of filament you're using. Maybe you're using a hard PLA plus and not a poly light that snaps right off. If you are still having issues and you do use a multi-filament system, think about grabbing some support PLA. I also have some from Bamboo Labs as well as some from Polymaker. They both make it and it's such an easy thing to use and the settings are as easy as well. What other issues are you guys having with your 3D printers? Leave it down in the comments below and I'll make a video about it. If you guys wanna see how I made that Moon Knight helmet from Marvel Rivals, which actually has working smoke, click on the link right here. Everybody have a great rest of your day. God bless you. Peace out.